Here's one thing that a lot of people argue about sometimes. Can we see the future? At least, can, do we have some kind of vague interpretation of what could be? You know, being a born-again Christian, one of the things that we learn in church, you know, as children, in Sunday school and all that, and even, like I said, as we go into youth classes, youth Sunday service and all that, one of the things we're taught throughout our, gener throughout our lives, and even in regular Sunday service, is when we read, a, we, is when a sermon calls for it, or when the pastor or reverend does study and does research, basically does the, we, does the work for the next sermon, writes up what they need to write up, looks up the chapters and the verses that would connect to what they would connect and kind of help smooth through or help interpretate what they're saying, help smooth through and connect the sermon for that day, the lesson for that day. One of the, one of the passages, one of the chapters and verses they get to is some of the passages and verses is in Isaiah, Revelations, Mark, Matthew, Luke, John, basically the New Testament as a whole, and most of the Old Testament, if not things like Psalms, Isaiah, Proverbs, you name it. And a lot of them always prophesied about what will be. Isaiah prophesied what would happen to Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross for us. Well, other chapters, like in the New Testament, and even the Old Testament shows this, that things are going to happen sometime in the future that's going to bring around the revel it's going to bring around the rapture, the seven years of tribulation, and afterwards. Now, true, not a lot of people, unfortunately, believe that's going to happen. But if you take a look at some of the things that have occurred over the past several years, you can pretty much say that the Bible, and God forgive me for saying this, has a valid argument. The prophecies in the Bible have a valid argument. So, when someone says they can predict the future, or they see the future, you can't always believe them. Because it's not true. Only God the Father knows what's to come. But when it comes to shows animated or live action, of course you're going to get characters that are given these prophetic visions. They are given looks into what could be or will be in the future. One thing Firebrand talked about last year was Celestia's prophetic visions. And what he talked about is what happened at the beginning of Season 4. See, this prophetic vision she got helped build up to the upcoming season finale. Because believe it or not, that prophetic vision was Season 4's finale. Basically, what she saw was the return of Turek. She saw that he had escaped and that he was coming. And that basically nothing could stop him except, the cho except for the rainbow powers. And that the only way those rainbow powers could be obtained and brought to the forefront is when all six, Twilight and her friends, saw the ra got what is known as the rainbow connection. In other words, they saw the true meaning well, basically, they saw the true meaning behind who they are and what they're supposed to represent. Pinky got it. Rarity got it. Applejack got it. Fluttershy. Rainbow Dash. They all got these moments throughout Season 4. And then it was in the finale where Twilight got it to where they realized this is who they are. This is what they meant. That these moments are basically making them realize this is who the... Of, Reminding them who they are and what they're supposed to do. Or who... And, well, even though I haven't watched season four entirely, that's the idea I get. That this helps remind them of who they are. What they represent. And the only way these powers could be obtained for them was when they gave up their elements of harmony to the Tree of Harmony to make it happen, from what I understand. But... What's funny about this 
is it wasn't just Celestia that saw this future. Her sister that walks the realm of, walks and travels through the realm of dreams, Princess Luna, also saw this. She saw it through her sister's dream, both realizing the significance of what would be. Both realizing that along with Cadence, they would have to transfer the power over to Twilight for when the moment would arrive. Because they knew, individually, they couldn't take down Turek. And that the only way that there was any chance for Turek to be defeated is if all the powers were combined together into one pony. And that would be Twilight. Part of this prophecy, I guess, in, the, in this episode, or in the, in the opening of Season 4, also indicated that this would be probably the final test for Twilight to basically assume her position as the Princess of Friendship. Because as we have seen from Season 3 on, as we saw indicated at the end of Season 3, or in Season 3 and at the end of it, Cadence became, a prince, became the Crystal Princess and thus became the ruler or the princess of the Crystal Empire. Twilight had become a princess, but she had no castle. She had no representation of being such. So season four was more. So season four served basically as sort of an adjusting period for Twilight in her new role, getting her ready for basically what would be the final test, the final test to prove whether or not she was worthy of being a princess now, and that would be what we got in the season four finale. But here's the thing, if Celestia saw this, was given this prophetic vision of what would be, why hasn't she, has, basically, has she gotten any more before or afterwards? Firebrand points out that she might have gotten some visions in the past, like her vision of how she would have to send Twilight away, A, to Ponyville to make new friends. A vision of the fact that she would probably have to fight Crystalis and lose. Who's to say that in the season two finale she didn't know about the whole Crystalis impersonating Cadence deal until it was too late? Who's to say she didn't know? I believe, in a sense, Celestia did know, but she didn't want to but she didn't want to let on or anything to Twilight because, of course, you, she would be spoiling. Because basically, that would ruin the outcome and something worse would happen. Firebrand even pointed this out, that had she known about the whole situation with Crystalis impersonating Cadence, and that had she pretty much been a step ahead, that, could have, that something worse could have happened, something bad could have occurred. So she had to let things go as planned. She had to let things go as they, as uh, pretty much they were foretold. She couldn't do anything. She couldn't alter anything. She had to just let things go as they were. Even if that meant disciplining Twilight and acting the way she did towards her, she had to let that happen and occur because if she even gave any inkling or any indication that she knew something was up, or that she knew what was happening, it could have spelled disaster. Another good example, possibly, of her getting these horrific powers is the whole thing with Starlight Glimmer. How could, of all characters, Celestria, and if not Luna, know about Starlight? Know what she was doing? My indication is she probably is that Celestia, and perhaps even Luna, saw something but knew that they had to, just like, with Cant just like Celestia did with Cantalot Wedding, and just like she did with the whole Turek deal, she had to let things go as they were. She had to let things happen as they had to for the final result to be what it was. Because if she would have interfered, or at least let Twilight know what was going to occur, she was probably worried that if she had done that, something worse would have happened. If she would have let Twilight know that, oh, Starlight Glimmer is going to mess with space and time, time, you need to stop her, here, you, could, you need to stop her, and here, you could stay a step ahead of her, and here's how you could stay a step ahead, 
perhaps from a horrific standpoint, standpoint, she realized that that would ruin things. That would hurt. That would hurt a question. It would hurt the time stream. It would do something. But it would do something that would make things worse than what they would be, and that things just had to go as is. Things had to happen as is for the outcome to be what it was. Because had she interfered, who's to say Starlight wouldn't have done any? Who's? Because if she would have interfered or even let Twilight know what was going to happen, who's to say things wouldn't have turned out worse than what Starlight was trying to intend them to be? The same thing if you want to add in Equestria Girls as well. Sunset Shimmer. Who's to say Celestia didn't get a horrific vision about Sunset acting the way she did towards her or was going to act the way she was towards her? Probably have an idea of what was going to happen Happened, and that's why she sent not just the main six, but just sent Twilight to go retrieve the crown. Because she realized that if she'd probably sent the main six, not only would they probably encounter the human selves, and that would disrupt a lot of things, things as well as like maybe the existence of both worlds, but at the same time, she realized that the only way there could be any chance for Sunset to be redeemed is to have somebody that probably understood where she's coming from help her out. And that's why Twilight was chosen to go through. Not just because it was her crown she had to get back, but also it was the f fact that Celestia, if she got this to a prophetic pro vision, to a prophetic vision, realized that Twilight was probably the only one that was necessary. And who's to say maybe Celestia hasn't gone over and encountered her human self and maybe shared these prophet visions with her, or at least maybe gave uh, used some magic so her human version could have the same kind of visions and know what was up. Who's to say a human version wasn't granted that same ability thanks to the pony version going through and giving her these abilities or giving her this, you know, power? Who's to say she didn't do that? Because if you think about it. If the Celestia in the Equestria Girls world is similar, but if dif similar if not different, then the similarity would be she probably knew what was going to happen, but just like the pony version, she had to let it play out. Because even if she was granted these same powers, thanks to her pony version coming over and coming face to face with her and giving her this ability, or at least sharing it with her, she knew probably just like Celestia, and maybe Celestia gave her the advice, that she couldn't interfere because it might change things. So again, who's to say Celestia didn't know about Sunset showing up the day or the whole thing with the whole coronation day or whatever it was going to be for Twilight in, a, in the Equestria Girls deal? Who's to say she didn't know? Because if she had known, because if she didn't know, why would she have sent Twilight? Yes, it was Twilight's crown, but usually Twilight has... When it comes to an adventure like this, usually goes not just with Spike, who did accompany her, but also with the rest of her friends. So who's to say that didn't happen? So who's to say she didn't know? She didn't have a prophetic, prophetic, a prophetic vision of what was going to be. B with Sunset, and that only Twilight could be the one to do it, because on the other side. Twilight was going to encounter the human equivalent of her friends, and that if her pony ver and that if the pony version of her, and that if the pony versions of those same friends would show up as well, that could mess things up. The thing is with Celestia, if she has had more than just one horrific vision of what's to be, had more than one horrific vision of what's to be or what will be was to be or what would would be or will be then that's up to fan interpretation that's even what Firebrand said we don't know exactly how many times she had these horrific por horrific visions so all we can do is add it up so all we can do is add it up to interpretation basically speculate as to how many she's had and why and again, he points out the same things I did. 
You know, he points out the whole fighting Crystalis and losing, probably knowing about Crystalis's motives, knowing she was impersonating Cadence, but couldn't really interfere because it might make things worse. Same thing with Starlight. It's like, how did she not know about the whole Starlight glimmer going through space and time deal, Ill, you know, being who she is? She probably did, but realized that if she let Twilight in on knowing, that could have made things worse. And again, another good example is, you know, the Equestria Girls deal, the first movie. How did she know that Twilight had to be the one to go through? Why couldn't she send the rest of the main six? Reason being, she probably went to that world herself at one point, encountered her human self, probably granted or given or shared the ability to see the future or get these visions with her human self, and this realized that if the main six would have, the other main, the other members of the main six would have gone with Twilight, that could have ruined things, that could have made things even worse, maybe destroyed the existence of both worlds because they would encounter the human selves, or whatever. The point is, besides season four being the only indication that she has this ability, because obviously she realized that she, along with Luna, would have to have to, along with Cadence, transfer the power to Twilight. And that this here would be the final season. Not final season, but this would be the season, the final test for Twilight to prove whether or not she was worthy of being a princess. Yes. And thus get her own castle to put her stamp, to put that stamp of authenticity of it, of authenticity on, I mean, on the title, I should say. The thing is, you know, if this was the only time, then it's, a, it's quite a surprise. But again, if she had, again, had she, but again, what I'm getting at is her seeing this future and knowing that her, Luna, and Cadence, her and Luna, along with Cadence, would have to transfer the power over to Twilight, thus making them, emo, making them weak to fight Turek. Knowing that, yes, combined, the powers could probably take him down, but... Not individually. That if they combined the powers and infused it into one pony along with her own, that would be a better chance as of it ha better chance of them defeating Turek. I mean, for her to see that, for her to come out with that knowledge because of that pro prophetic vision that she got, and the fact that she probably also knew that the only other, the only other way for Turek to be defeated was with the introduction introduction of the rainbow powers in place of the elements of harmony and that throughout the season to build this arc and smooth build this arc and continue on with this continuity was for each of the characters to have a rainbow moment if you know what I'm saying you know have a rainbow moment 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 had she known had she known about this all from this one vision again the question is did she not know about the other events and moments that occurred through the rest of the show because for her to for for us as a fan base us as viewers to only see this happen once have an acknowledgement that yes she can get these visions who's to say she didn't get them before Who's to say she didn't get them when it came to Equestria Girls and the whole Sunset Shimmer deal? Who's to say she didn't go over there and share if, share this power or share a portion of this power with her human equivalent and say, hey, look, this is what's going to happen, but don't do anything. Don't let on you know. Who's to say she didn't know about Starlight messing with the space-time continuum? Had she known, she probably... Or had she known, she probably... I mean, had she known, because, again, what I'm saying is I got a little distracted there, but had she known, known about Starlight doing the whole space-time deal, you know, you know, why didn't she tell Twilight? Why? Because she probably felt things would be made even worse if she did. Because Star Twilight would end up being a step ahead. What about the whole thing with Crystalis at the Candlelot wedding? Probably knew about that, but realized that if she didn't let things you know, go as they're supposed to, go as they're supposed to, or go as planned, without, you know, acknowledging she knew something was up, or without tipping her hat, that 
things might have got worse. That if she had let on, she knew what was happening, things might have got worse. You know what I'm saying? And then what about season six? Did she know about that? Had she known about that, maybe she didn't let on. Did she get a vision about that? Because if she did, apparently she didn't let on for both Starlight or Twilight, or Twilight and Starlight, because that was going to be a final test for them too, mostly for Starlight, because she would have to figure out what to do. She would have to prove herself as well. And who's to say maybe she didn't share this vision with Twilight, but had Twilight not say anything when it came to the season six finale? I'm just saying, I'm just saying, folks, who's to say she didn't know? Who's to say she didn't know about Flory Hart being an alicorn? Being born an alicorn and having these powers. We, I mean, had she known, why didn't she let Cadence and Shining Armor and Twilight know? Because things might have gone worse than they were? Who knows? The point is, the point is for a lot of us to, to see the jumping, to see that she has these visions happen just once in the series and nothing, and no other time after that does open the door to interpretation, to speculation. One has to wonder, does she know more about, does she have horrific visions of other events that had occurred in the season? Does she have a, is she in continuity having a, having a, is she in continuity, did she have in continuity for this season a horrific vision, a horrific par, vision of the season seven finale and the events that could happen there? We don't know. It's all built up to interp interpretation. That's all it is. But that's really all I'm going to say in my reply to Firebrand's video he did a year ago. Let me know what you guys think. Comment down below, and I'll talk to you later.